we're going to do a little video on assembly of our latest rifle kit, which is uh, our Woods Runner rifle. Uh, we've talked about this rifle in a previous video. Uh, we discussed uh, some of the characteristics of it and uh, some of the historical basis for the rifle as well. And uh, we can probably put a link to that video in the description. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll, um, like I mentioned, just go through the whole process of assembling this rifle in the video. We probably <coughs> won't get to doing any polishing of the metal parts or um, finishing of the metal or wood, that sort of thing. We'll just go through just the assembly of it. <clears throat> this is basically how a customer will receive the stock. It has some parts installed, it has the butt plate installed, the trigger plate, and the trigger <coughs> guard, the entry pipe, <coughs> and the patch boxes in the, and you'll receive <coughs> all the other parts necessary for, for building this, a little bag here, as well as the lock and the barrel. And then also, uh, I see I didn't gather, got, uh, get a ramrod, but we'll do that later. So, <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll try to come up with a, an assembly process that just makes it as simple as possible. Makes the process uh, uh, go as smooth as it can. So the first thing I think we'll do is we're going to actually remove the trigger guard and we're going to install the trigger. So, in order to remove the trigger guard, it's held on with these pins pins that are installed. These pins go through little tabs in the trigger guard and hold it to the stock. So the best way is to use a pair of ice grips <clears throat> to grab the pins. And you can just kind of twist and pull. There we go. This way to remove the trigger guard, because <clears throat> it's kind of a tight fit sometimes at the back, is just to hit this little extension that sticks up. And that brings the back out first, and then you can lift the rest of it out. So you can see the, the pinholes through the tabs in the trigger guard. And that's what holds the guard to the stock, as well as other parts of the rifle as well. There's other parts that are held to the stock with pins. It's a very common method of uh, attaching the parts to the rifle. You might think that you can just take the trigger, just install it like this, but the size is such that it, it won't go in. So you have to put it in with the trigger plate, which is no big deal at all. So the easiest way is to pull out the trigger plate, and you can put a screw in there, and wiggle it, and you can pull out the trigger plate. You can also just put a screw from up the other side through the hole and tap on it, and it'll tap it out. Now, the way this trigger plate is held in, there's a little small spike at the, the end of the, uh, the trigger plate. So that gets pushed in the stock first. I usually just use a little dowel to make sure it's seated in there. Tap it back, and then tap it down. And then it's in place. And like I said, this is already gonna be installed, but that's the best way to reinstall it. We're going to pull this out, and we're going to take the trigger, we're going to put it in here, we're going to put these in together at the same time. Figure out how to do it, there we go. So now we'll go ahead and tap the plate back, get the plate down. So, the trigger's in the mortise, but it, it's not pinned, so it has to uh, pivot on a pin in order for the trigger to work properly. So that pin hole goes from underneath the side plate, which you can see here, and then it exits right here. And there's a corresponding hole in the trigger itself. So we'll install the pin, and it should be good to go. So installing the pin can be a little bit tricky sometimes to get the holes aligned. You can use it, shine a light through it and align the holes. That's one technique. 
sorry about the noise. Um, another technique that works well is to just simply take a pin, a piece of your pin stock, and you can either file it down under size or grind it down under size. The easiest way to do this is just to chuck up a piece of pin stock in a drill. And if you have a grinder, you can just hold it against a grinder. You can also just spin it and then file it to make it undersized. I don't know, maybe 10 thousandths undersized or so. Put a little lead on it as well so it doesn't have a square tip. Round the tip a little bit. What that allows you to do is you can stick it through the hole and you can feel for that the pinhole. That's probably it right there. You can see how it's pivoting. Okay, so this isn't a permanent hole or a permanent pin, it's just a temporary pin. There might be a little bit of trash in that inlet. It's a little bit not quite as smooth as I'd hope, but it's not bad either. So now what I can do is since this we know that this temporary pin is going through the plate is just to put a little side pressure on the trigger so it doesn't move. So I'm just pushing down with my thumb a little bit. I'm going to lift this pin out. <clears throat> and now I can take another pin. I'm just going to steal one of these here that it, since it's handy. So that's a, more of a permanent pin and I'm going to tap it through here. And it should be all lined up with the trigger. Okay, there it is. The trigger's moving, moving pretty freely. Let me take it apart, we'll make sure there's no chips or sawdust in there because it, it is a little bit, not quite as smooth as I'd hoped, but it's pretty good. So you can see the pin is sticking out here. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut this pin off since it's in the lock mortise and below the side plate in order that um, we can assemble the rest of the, the rifle. So, first thing I'll do is I'll pull this out just a little bit. See how we want it to be below the surface there. Okay, that's fine. Now we can mark this pin. You can mark it in various ways. You can use a, maybe a little marker or a little file to scratch a, a line on it. Pull it out. When you pull pins out, it's best to kind of twist at the same time. I'm going to trim it just a little bit below that line. Side cutters will work fine on this pin stock. And you can file it square or roughly square. And then file a little bit of a lead on there. So we're breaking that corner, rounding it. When the pin goes in and out, it's less likely to chip the stock, or break the stock. So a nice rounded end is what you want. You can also spin this in the drill and hold some sandpaper on it if you want, or a file. Various ways of doing this. Okay, we're gonna put this back in. And in this case, we're gonna Use our little alignment tool again just to make sure and it happens to be in the right spot already, so that's good. I'm going to pull this out, put this back in. Okay. So if we use a little pin punch, we can hold it on there and make sure that's tapped down. The trigger moves. Pretty decent. So that task is now complete. I think what we'll do next is we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get the guard back installed. It's best to put the, the, the front extension in the mortise first, get it in place, and then we'll tap the back in then after that. We'll take one of our pins again, put it in here, Tap it in such that it just comes into the, or is just slightly below the mortar, the surface of the lock mortise. 
<clears throat> so I'm gonna again mark this. We're gonna go ahead and cut this one off as well. I'm just using a little three-cornered file to put a mark on the pin. There's different ways you can do that. We're gonna go through the same process. We're gonna cut this pin off. File it roughly square and then get yourself a little lead on that. Okay. Use your pin punch again. When you're using a pin punch, it's best to use it like this, where you have your, your finger very, very close to the end, or it's actually sticking out a little past the end. And that allows you to set your finger on the, the stock and really control it much better. So if you try to do it like this, it's you're gonna slip and slide and you're gonna beat up the stock. Put your finger right, right down at the end and it acts as your, your control. So that's in place. Now I stole a pin for the uh, rear of the trigger guard. I guess I have an extra sitting here, so we'll use it. It's, it's extra long. We'll just leave it long at, that, at this stage. So and, now... And why can you leave that one long? So we can leave this one long right now because it's gonna have to come in and out. And then the only reason we trim these is because we have the lock on the side plate that has to go in and we won't be able to continue with the rest of the build with these pins being long. But this one can stay long, it won't hurt anything. So we'll go ahead and put, get the side plate. So we have the side plate right here. Comes fully machined. Should fit right in the inlet without any any trouble. Went right in. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and slip the bit, put the barrel in. The barrel should. Underlugs. Yep. So the under underlugs are already machined as part of the barrel. They're already slotted, so it's a package ready to go right in the stock. Chips here in this, this underlug slot in the stock, and then the ramrod hole was drilled, so I just cleaned those out. Okay, now the barrel should just go completely in. We make sure we fit all these before they leave the shop, so it should go in without any trouble. The only exception is if the if the, uh, the climate you're in is significantly different than, than our climate or our shop climate, the, the wood could change uh, dimensions slightly. So the barrel went in, I'm going to squeeze it in here, so it's in place. The barrel is in the stock now, which is good. No work in fitting the tang, just ready to go. It's always good to get the barrel back. So next we're going to take the tang bolt. Tang bolt, we're going to pick it through the hole. And with any luck, it'll thread in there and okay, so that's down and nice. So next we'll install the lock. Sometimes there's a little bit of chips or something in the mortise. You can use a brush or something to clean it out brushes like this in the shop just to make sure there's no chips and anything in the mortise. So take our lock. Our lock should fit in the mortise without any trouble. It has the lock bolt holes drilled and tapped already so shouldn't be any any difficulty here. Okay so that's in place. Now, just turn this so we can put the lock bolts in. Two lock bolts. The one with the longer threads is the rear lock bolt. The one with the shorter threads is the front lock bolt.
Okay, in place. So the lock should be up against the barrel. A little tap to make sure, but it looks pretty good. And we're already at half cock, so we pulled it back to half cock. Let's go ahead and pull it back to full cock. It was in fine. There's really no very little trigger play, a little bit, which is what you want. So as you can see when I touch the trigger, there's a little tiny bit of movement. That means that the trigger isn't putting pressure on the sear without you pulling the trigger. So you don't want any pressure on the sear until you pull the trigger. So that's about perfect. So we're going to try it here. Frizz and closes. Full cock. Pull the trigger. Very good. Perfect. I'll show you one other thing right now as well. Some people probably that are, that are new um, might not know how to sharpen a flint. So if the flint doesn't spark well, that means it's probably dull. So the easiest way to do that is to put, to ha put the lock to half cock. You can use uh, about any little piece of metal. You could use just a, something to tap with like this. You probably use this little hammer like this or you can use a screwdriver it doesn't really matter I put my finger underneath it and if you tap the edge you get these little little flakes that come off like this a little bit right on the edge yeah little flakes that come off and when the flint breaks like that it becomes very sharp again and that's what allows it to um, that's what allows it to, to make sparks. Fire it again here. Here we go. It seems to be working well. Let's move on to the ramrod pipes. I actually see that if I'd have done something in a little different order, we wouldn't have to take it back apart. So we're going to have to install the nose cap, but in order to install the nose cap, we're going to have to take the barrel back out. So it's not a big deal, but Probably a little better order would have been before we install the barrel in the lock, go ahead and put the nose cap in. But it doesn't make much difference. You have to take a gun apart various times when you're assembling. Okay, on to the ramrod pipes. As I mentioned, the entry pipe is already installed. We do that um, because it's sometimes a little trickier. Sometimes the castings are twisted or bent. And uh, we just go ahead and install that for you so you don't have to fight with that. Now with the ramrod pipes, Sometimes there's a little bit of flashing on the end of the ramrod pipe from the casting process. It's not a bad idea to file that off, make it nice and flush. And then you can also, another little tip is you can take a countersink or even a little mounted stone like I do and can run in here and that'll chamfer that edge a little bit and smooth it off. See what that is? Never... This is just a mounted stone. It's worn significantly, but um, I'm just using it as like a countersink. You can use a countersink as well. This countersink's pretty dull, but I guess it's working okay. Put a little bevel on your pipes. There you go. Make the ramrod so it won't catch. I'm just filing off the flash. What flashing is, is sometimes from the casting process in the mold, you end up having a little thin, kind of like wire edge of metal that sticks past the ends. So you just get rid of that little bit of flash. And then we can use our countersink to break that corner. Okay, so now we'll move on to the inlet. The yeah, inlet looks like it's pretty good. You don't see any chips in it or anything. If you see any chips, you can brush or clean them out. We already have the holes through the, the tabs in the ramrod pipes. That should go right in with any luck and be ready to install. So we're gonna tap it this way just a tad. 
help it get clear down in the inlet. You do want to make sure it's all the way down in the inlet, which it seems to be pretty good. So you'll focus on the groove in the bottom of the, the pipe. Looks pretty good. So what I do next is I would clamp it, put a little clamp on it. You don't want to squeeze it so hard that you bend the ramrod pipe, but you know, holding it down in the inlet is a good thing. Then we take our pin and we can tap the pin through. It should all line up, should work fine. One little tip is take a little bit of wax. This happens to be just some beeswax. You can use about any type of wax. Put on your pin and then it'll slide through the hole much easier. And this pin already has a, a, a rounded end and that's much more important on installing ramrod pipes because if it doesn't it can catch the wood on the far side and uh, break it out. So that went in there, seems to be in there well, it doesn't wiggle, you couldn't ask for anything better, it's just, just right. So we're going to do the same on this one, okay, very nice, Let me slide it forward a little bit. Clamp on it, Just squeeze it down, take a pin, a little wax on it again, a hammer. Okay, it's held down there firmly, doesn't wiggle. Didn't have to fight to get the pin through either, so we can't ask for anything better than that. That looks very good.